friends, welcome back. Today we have another continent lesson because we've been learning about the continents. And just like the days of the week, how many continents do we have? It's the same number of days of the week of how many continents there are on our planet Earth. Seven, there are seven continents. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this is our globe. It represents the earth, right? So we have seven continents and let's sing our continent song again, okay? North America, South America, Europe, Asia, Africa. Don't forget Australia, don't forget Antarctica, North America, South America, Europe, Asia, Africa. So those are our seven continents on our globe. And we've been learning about the biggest continent, Asia. It's the yellow continent on our globe. Asia is the biggest continent. Do you remember what the smallest continent was? The smallest one was Australia, but we're learning about the biggest one, Asia. It has so many countries in it. Last week, Ms. Siobhan talked about India. Today, I wanna to talk to you about another country in Asia called Japan, okay? Japan is a really great place. There's a lot of cities there, much like where we live. A lot of cities, a lot of really fast trains called bullet trains. And I want to read you a story. And there's a lot of amazing culture coming from Japan. It's really beautiful um, to see the different kinds of traditions and ceremonies and clothes and food that come from Japan. And I want to talk a little bit about it with you guys today with this book called Suki's Kimono. So that's a little girl named Suki, and she's wearing a special traditional Japanese outfit called a kimono. Can you say kimono? Kimono. Really, really beautiful. So let's read about how Suki got that kimono and what she's going to do with it. On the first day of school, Suki wanted to wear her kimono. Her sisters did not approve. That means they don't want her to do that. They don't like what she's doing. You can't wear that, said Mary. People will think you're weird. You can't wear that, said Yumi. Everyone will laugh and no one will play with you. You need something new, Suki. You need something cool. So there's Suki looking really beautiful in her kimono and there are her sisters not being super nice, judging her a little bit, telling her that she shouldn't wear that. But Suki shook her head. She didn't care for new. She didn't care for cool. She wanted to wear her favorite thing. And her favorite thing was her kimono. Suki's obachan, obachan means grandmother, grandma, obachan, had given her the kimono. The first time Suki wore it, her obachan took her to a street festival where they slurped bowls of slippery cold somen noodles and shared a cone of crunchy shaved ice topped with a sweet red bean sauce. So those are some fun foods from Japan, some fun Japanese foods. Cold somen noodles, those are a, like a summer noodle that people eat in the summer in Japan and a cone of crunchy shaved ice topped with a sweet red bean sauce. It's almost like an ice cream cone, shaved ice with red bean sauce. And there they are really enjoying themselves. She's remembering this memory with her obachan, really enjoying it. She was having so much fun that time. Under strings of paper lanterns, Suki joined her obachan in a circle dance. She followed her and copied her movements trying to be as light and as graceful. She watched the other women and children who danced, especially those who were dressed in cotton kimonos like her. So she's at this beautiful Japanese festival and seeing so many other Japanese women wearing beautiful kimonos. So this memory makes her kimono so special because she loved the way she felt this day. Later, Suki sat close to the stage that when the taiko drummers performed 
bomb, 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 she felt like she'd swallow, swallowed a bowl of thunder and her whole insides quaked and quivered. Before they left the festival, Suki and her Obachan stopped at a souvenir stand. There were so many things to choose from, but her Obachan found the prettiest thing of all, a handkerchief of pale pink linen de decorated with tiny maple leaves and cherry blossoms. When she gave it to Suki, she said, this will help you remember our day. So Grandma Obachan picked out a special handkerchief for Suki to remind her of how much fun they had that day. Now it was time for school. Mother checked Suki's Obi one last time and took a picture of Mary, Yumi, and Suki together by the front steps. Then as she watched, the three sisters made their way down the block to their school. So there they go, they're off to school. Suki's wearing her kimono, she's very proud of it, and her sister's not really enjoying that. She turned and waved to her mother before she clip-clopped along in her shiny red geta, feeling very pleased in her fan-patterned blue kimono. So look, her shoes, you can't really see them, they're called geta, and they're really special sandals. They're kind of lifted off the ground. They have a, a platform, so they probably make you a little bit taller. Once in a while, Suki would lift her arms and let the butterfly sleeves flutter in the breeze. It made her feel like she'd grown her own set of wings. So look at Suki in her kimono and her gita and her little parasol. She's just feeling so beautiful in these clothes, in these Japanese clothes. When they reached the school, Mary and Yumi hurried across the yard to a group of their friends. Suki stopped and looked around. Some of the children turned and stared at her and others giggled and pointed at her kimono, but Suki ignored them. She took a seat on the swing to wait for the bell. A girl dressed in overalls, just like a pair Suki had at home, sat on the swing beside her. Hi Suki, said the girl. Hi Penny, said Suki. So look, are the girls dressed the same or different here? They're dressed a little bit different, right? This little girl has overalls on and Suki has her kimono on. How come you're dressed so funny? Penny asked. Where did you get those shoes? Suki lifted her feet off the sand and wiggled her toes. I'm not dressed funny, she said. My grandma gave me these shoes. Suki started pumping her legs. After a moment, Penny did the same, and soon they were both swinging as fast and as high as they could. So this little girl, Penny, at first was wondering why Suki was dressed differently than the other children, right? And she said, why are you dressed so funny? But what did Suki said? She said, it's not funny. It's just a little different from what you're wearing, right? But it's so special to her and so super beautiful that she's just, you know, telling her it's... It's just a little bit different, but really, really beautiful. When the bell rang, Suki and Penny jumped off their swings and ran to the gym for the first day assembly. Once they were finally taken to their new classroom, Suki chose a desk near the window. Penny chose a desk next to Suki. So look, now they're gonna be really good friends. So as they were waiting, to, as they were sitting down, one little boy reached over, snatched at Suki's sleeve, and said, look at this, she's a bat. <gasps> That's so rude, right? That's not nice what he's saying. That's not being a cool bean to make fun of somebody, right? We be, we're be we kind and he's not being very kind. Suki felt her cheeks burn, but she did not respond. That means she didn't say anything. Instead, she just concentrated on sitting up straight and tall the way her Obachan always did. It was easy to do with an obi wrapped snug around her middle. Her obi was golden yellow and in its fold, Suki had tucked away her pale pink handkerchief. Welcome to the first grade, said her teacher. My name is Mrs. Paggio. She smiled. Let's introduce ourselves and tell everyone what we did this summer. When it was her turn to speak, Suki stood up and told the teacher her name. Hello, Suki, said Mrs. Paggio. What did you do this summer? My grandma visited us, she said, straightening her sleeves. She brought me my kimono and my gita. Suki raised her foot to show the teacher her wooden clog. Somewhere in the classroom, someone laughed, but Suki took a deep breath and continued. 
The best thing was that she took me to a festival and there were dancing girls dressed like me and they danced like this. She took a few steps and swayed her arms sideways. Look, now she's dancing, someone said, but Suki didn't hear. She hummed the music she remembered hearing at the festival. She remembered how it felt to dance in the open air on fresh cut grass that tickled her toes. She tried to picture the other dancers, how they moved forward in the circle with the rhythm of the music, how they stamped their feet, first right, then left, swung their arms first up, then down, how they stepped back and back and back and then clapped. When Suki couldn't remember the next step, she just made it up to keep dancing. One, two, one, two, stop. So Suki is, show, is trying to remember the dance she saw at the festival with her Obachan, and she's trying to do it for her classmates. When she finished, the room seemed very quiet. Everyone was watching her. Suki sat down wondering if she was in trouble. Do you think she's in trouble? I don't think so. But Mrs. Paggio said, that was wonderful, Suki, and she started to clap. Then so did Penny. And after a moment, so did the entire class. Wow, so everyone ended up loving her, Japanese kimono and her beautiful dancing. After school, as the three sisters walked home together, Mary and Yumi grumbled about their first day. No one even noticed my new sweater, said Mary. No one even noticed my cool shoes, said Yumi. But Suki just smiled. As she clip-clopped along behind them, Suki pulled out the pale pink handkerchief from her obi and held it up over her head to catch the wind. And in her blue cotton kimono and in her shiny red geta, Suki danced all the way home. So friends, remember we talked a little bit about feeling confident, right? We talked about feeling confident. Feeling confident is when you're proud of yourself, you feel so good about yourself, do you think that Suki felt proud and confident at the end of the day? Definitely. She loved her kimono, she loved her geta, and she was so happy to show it to all of her friends, even though a little, some of them were a little bit, didn't know what to think about it because it was so different. But in the end, everybody realized that it's different, but it's really, really beautiful and so special to her, and they became proud of her too, right? And that helped her to be confident. I wanted to show you some traditional Japanese clothes and some traditional Japanese traditions and culture. And I wanna show you a little bit about a uh, Japanese food called sushi. And I wanna show you how you can make pretend sushi at home, okay? Okay, my friends. So I wanted to show you how to make pretend sushi at home. So real sushi is usually a roll made with rice and veggies and fish. And I wanted to show you how to make pretend sushi with these materials. So here I have some cotton balls and those are going to be like the pretend rice. Here I have some little different colored felt pieces that can be the fish and the veggies like avocado and um, cucumber. And then here we have these are what we're going to wrap the sushi in, which represents the seaweed that sushi is usually wrapped in. So let me show you how you can do it. So I here I have a little plate. And first I'm going to take a little bit of rice and a sushi wrap, and I'm going to roll it around. Okay, so now that kind of looks like a little sushi, but I want to add some ingredients in. Maybe that can be the fish. Maybe I'll put a little cucumber. Okay, so there's one sushi roll and I'll put it on my plate. Next, I'm going to make a different kind of sushi roll. This time, I'm going to take a big piece of fish, put it over the top. And then I'm gonna wrap my seaweed around. And this is a different kind of sushi, like a sashimi almost. Okay, and you could keep going. You can make as many little sushi rolls as you like. I'm just gonna make two for now. And then I have some chopsticks. 
And you could pretend to pick up. You could practice picking up your little pretend sushi with your chopsticks. All right, friends, I hope you enjoyed making pretend sushi. And I'd love to see what you come up with if you made some sushi on your own. I hope you have a great day and I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.